Hello, Adam from Stockwell Safety here. And in this video, what I'll be going through is taking you through a step-by-step -step process of exactly how I would answer a NEBOSH open book exam question. Before watching this one, I would encourage you to watch a previous video that we've done, which gives you a kind of broader overview of the approach that I'm going to be using. Um, but what I want to do is take that approach that's featured in the other video and I'll put a I'll put a link to that video on the screen and in the description. But what I'll be doing in this video is taking that approach and applying it step by step to answering an exam question so that you can see how I would do it stage by stage. And I'm going to be taking it in stages. So this is going to be part one of a series because I'm going to be going fairly sort of in depth and granular uh, and covering this very detailed and in a very detailed and comprehensive way. So I don't want to make each video, I don't want to make a very, very long video. So what I'll be doing is um, putting together several videos in a series. So this is part one. So we're going to be taking this in stages because the approach does involve breaking down the process of constructing an answer to an open book exam question in a stage by stage fashion. So what we've got here on the screen is the on the on the right is the NEBOSH exam uh, answer paper. Um, let me just scroll down to the actual areas where you can input your answers. And we're going to be basing this on the exam that took place uh, in, uh, I think it was August, the 6th of August 2020. You can get hold of the exam paper that was used in that exam uh, on the NEBOSH website, but we'll also put links to that as well in the description. What we've done at Stockwell Safety is we've put the scenario that's used in the exam question in our learning management system, um, which I'm going to navigate to now. Uh, this is for the benefit of any learners that we've got enrolled, um, uh, registered with Stockwell Safety that are enrolled on forthcoming exams. So let me just get this scenario up. So it was the 6th of August. Um, so we've got the scenario in this drop down and then we've got all the tasks in this in these drop down. This is the one that I'm going to be concentrating on today. But let me just open up the scenario. I'm not going to read through the scenario right now because we're going to be doing that anyway as part of the process of constructing the answer to the question, but the first task is justifying health and safety improvements. And the question, let's break this down, what financial, so straight away it's financial arguments, not moral or legal arguments, what financial arguments could you use to justify your proposed recommendations to segregate forklift trucks and the workers, and this is for 10 points. And there's a note here to say that you should support your answer where applicable using relevant information from the scenario. And what I will uh, stress at this point is that you've got to know your stuff. Don't think that there's any shortcuts when it comes to these open book exam questions. So I'm going to assume that you've done your studying and um, that you um, are coming into this having developed your knowledge around this subject. Otherwise, it, it won't work. You know, the knowledge is gone. It has to be there. So you have to do your studying in the usual way. So what financial arguments could you use to justify your proposed recommendation? So the first stage is what I recommend doing is going through the scenario and basically picking out of the scenario anything that you think that you could later develop a financial argument around. And at this stage, you're not actually looking to develop those arguments and, and flesh them out. 
it's just whether there's something there that makes you think that you could go on to develop an argument later on so this is stay this we're doing this in stages so you don't really need to think too deeply or uh, or or analyze this or break it down any more than just scanning through it and pulling out things that you think that you can base your financial argument around so let's do that so you've recently moved to a new job you're now responsible for health and safety at a large busy retail store um, okay so large busy retail store I'm gonna now I don't know what the financial argument is yet but I think I may have something in the back of my mind that makes me think yeah I'll be able to develop something around that that is located on the outskirts of a large town served by good roads the store sells do-it-yourself and hardware goods such as tools equipment and hazardous chemicals to the local businesses and the general public right local businesses and the general public so there's kind of two sets of stakeholders there to be aware of um, and again I'm not really fleshing out an argument here I don't even know whether there is a financial argument I, I merely think that there might be I'm not really thinking about it too much there might not be a financial argument there but that's a bridge that I'll cross when I get to it in the next stage um, the organization that owns the store has a hundred stores nationally and ten in your area so I think that's something that could be developed into an argument so let me just put that in there so I'm copying and pasting this stuff in by the way none of this stuff that I'm pasting into my exam answer none of this is actually going to make it to the final cut um, everything is going to be my words and my arguments I'm just using these as kind of prompts I suppose or almost like placeholders um, that I'm going to actually insert some text into afterwards the main part of the store is open to customers to view and buy goods okay so again I think maybe there's something there don't exactly know what but maybe there's something there at the back of the store through an automatic opening door is a large warehouse where stocks of goods are arranged on racks of shelving okay stocks of goods are expensive let me get that in there there's something potentially I can develop around that um, only store workers are allowed in the warehouse warehouse workers use forklift trucks to move goods from delivery trucks into the warehouse from delivery trucks into the warehouse I'm going to put something there the ceiling of an idea I've got here is that uh, delivery trucks are from other companies they might not want to work with uh, with Pete with uh, companies that have got a poor health and safety record again I don't know exactly where I'm going with that at the moment but I'm just going to leave it for now and move on when the store is closed to customers the goods are moved into the main part of the building uh, main part of the store to restock shelves you report to the overall store and warehouse manager the warehouse workforce consists of 20 workers including two shift supervisors split equally between two 12-hour shifts um, on a rotor basis of four days on four days off since you started your new job you have seen a lot of examples of rule breaking in the warehouse okay I'm not sure about that one but I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in anyway for example you've seen goods stacked in aisles and blocking designated walkways okay yeah maybe I can base something around that and what I'm doing here is is by bringing in things directly from the scenario I'm almost guaranteeing that my answer is going to be relevant to the scenario which is a big thing in these open book exams workers have to avoid many obstacles as they walk through the warehouse causing them to step into vehicle routes 
work uh, workers of uh, I'm, actually yeah I'm gonna it's just the fact that it's vehicles isn't it vehicles are likely that I mean they can cause fatal injuries so the, the sort of magnitude of harm can be significant and therefore so could financial implications workers have told you that there are frequent near misses right okay I'm having that one frequent near misses I think there's definitely something around that one hopefully you can see what I'm doing here I'm not really thinking too deeply about things I'm just grabbing sort of vague seedlings of ideas and sticking sticking them in there so frequent near misses between forklift trucks and workers and collisions with products causing damage and spillages obviously a financial impact there are no written records of any of these okay so again maybe there's been lost opportunities to actually save significant amount of money there maybe again I'm not really going to stop and think about it too deeply at this point there have been many injuries recorded over the years okay again because your arguments have got to be persuasive so you know I'm going to really kind of lay it on thick and anything that I can use potentially I'm grabbing most recently a repeat of a more serious collision occurred involving a young forklift truck driver so a more serious collision involving a forklift truck driver again I'm having that for now I might discard it later again it might not actually come to anything but that's to think about later the brakes were applied too late as the driver was distracted by their mobile mobile phone the forklift truck skidded on an oil spillage and knocked goods over onto a passing worker knocked goods over so maybe those goods were damaged financial impact on this occasion the worker's leg was broken which required urgent hospital treatment okay you don't get over a broken leg anytime soon do you the hospital is five miles away from the store the worker is expected to be off work for six weeks there's a financial impact there the injured worker is seeking legal advice in order to make a claim for compensation you know if you've if you've done any kind of studying around um, you know the financial impacts of health and safety you'll know about that one worker absence and turnover are high right okay let's grab that one I yeah I know for sure I'm going to be able to uh, make financial arguments here I mean there's not even any doubt about it so these are the, probably the ones I'm going to come back to first when I move on to the next stage there are no health and safety worker representatives okay so I'm taking I'm kind of going to make an argument about morale being low potentially and like how that can have a fine financial impact almost an invisible financial impact but it's there uh, warehouse workers have told you that they have complained to management about working conditions many times they rarely see management in the warehouse you cannot find any written records of complaints again I'll maybe missed opportunities You have tried to convince the overall store and warehouse manager that something needs to be done to improve health and safety in the warehouse. You are told that there is no money for that kind of thing. That's almost a provocation, that is. And even if it were available, it would cause too much disruption to the business, right? <laughs> you know, that's just dangling that in front of in front of me like a carrot, that one. As a result of the recent forklift truck collision, you were visited by an enforcement inspector who has issued an improvement notice. Okay. Let's have that. Might be able to work with that 
in some way. The inspector thinks it's only a matter of time before workers are more seriously injured or even killed in the warehouse. Shall I have that? Um, yeah, go on and why not? Like I so said, I might not, I might run into issues where I'm duplicating points, which I want to try and avoid, but I'll sort that out later. The inspector also observed that the written risk assessments are too general. Okay, risk assessments too general. Well, that probably applies to all areas of the business, not just the ones involving forklift, forklift trucks. So I could use that maybe, maybe, if it's relevant to the question being asked. I'll sort it out later. And do not reflect the actual risks in the warehouse. The inspector wants to see a more effective health and safety management system at their next visit. You have discussed with the inspector possible improvements to health and safety in the warehouse. The proposed solution involves segregating forklift trucks and workers with barriers, pedestrian walkways, designated crossing places and separate entrances for workers and forklift trucks. In addition, you tell the inspector that you will review health and safety performance internally and externally in order to make comparisons. Okay, now let me just see how many things have we pulled out of that situation. Just put it into a, a numbered list. Okay, we've got 25 items here. Um, now, the fact of the matter is that I only need 10. This is a 10 point question. So even if more than half of what I've got on that list at this point isn't going to go anywhere, yeah, I, I'm not going to be able to make persuasive arguments uh, or there's duplication. It's not really too much of a problem because there's 25 things that I've got to play with and I need to get 10 points to do well in this question to gain the maximum points available. So I'm not really too concerned about that. What I'm also going to do at this point, I'm going to highlight all this in red because when it comes to the next stage where I'm going to develop my arguments, I'm going to write that in normal, in normal font uh, color. And I, what I don't want to do is leave behind any of the text from the question because there's I won't gain any points for that and it's going to eat into my word count and I don't want any wasted words so that is the end of stage one that's all it is stage one is just reading through the scenario and latching on to anything that you think you could potentially develop into the financial argument. Stage two is where we're going to flesh things out and there's a different approach to take with that, a different method, uh, you know, the methodology develops further. But that's all it is for stage one. Don't think about it too uh, deeply at this point. Um, just get the ideas, drag them out of the uh, scenario, put them onto the, onto the page. Don't stress about it because you, all you're doing at this point is giving yourself things that you are going to develop later on. Um, I'll leave it there. Uh, what I'll do, as I said, is stage two is going to be a separate video. So if you want to be notified when that uh, comes out, I'd invite you to uh, subscribe to the channel uh, and make sure that the notifications are turned on and um, you'll then be alerted when um, I release the video for how to go about you know, developing your ideas further.